What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 27 in the math three questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that David plans to cover the floor of his room with new material. The floor is an isosceles trapezoid. The fact that it's an isosceles trapezoid is very important, whose bases are 16 feet and 26 feet, and sides are 13 feet in length. And each piece of new material has an area of two and a half square feet. And we're assuming the pieces of new material can be cut as needed, which means that we're not thinking of them just as squares or just as triangles or anything like that. Um, we're trying to figure out how many pieces David needs. Now, this question tests a lot of smaller skills, like the properties of an isosceles trapezoid, the formula for the actual area of any trapezoid, the Pythagorean theorem, and using number tables and proportions. We're going to get to all these skills as we go, but they're all going to come out in small ways. It's just a lot of different skills that this question covers. So let me start by getting out my big whiteboard and going ahead and drawing this trapezoid so that we can move forward with this problem. All right, so here is a very poor drawing of an isosceles trapezoid, and here is the formula for the area of a trapezoid. Now, the problem gave us our two bases. It gave us that this one was 16 and this one was 26. We know it's an isosceles trapezoid, so these are congruent, and in fact, it gives us a length of 13 for both of them, but it doesn't give us the height. It doesn't give us this measurement that runs perpendicular to both of our bases and describes the shortest distance between them. So we're gonna have to figure that out ourselves. Now, because this is an isosceles triangle, I not only know that these two sides are congruent, but I also know that these two parts from the edges of the top base where it runs parallel to the bottom base are also congruent. So that tells me, and I also know that this is a right angle, so if I know this side and I know this side, I can find out this side of a right triangle, which is my height. So I'll go ahead and call this B. Call this B. All I know is that 16, the base, plus my two end pieces, Together, those equal 26. So now I can treat this like a regular old two-step equation to get a value for b. Um, so let's see. Subtract 16 from both sides. 16 minus 16 cancels. 26 minus 16 is 10. Now I divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 cancels. 10 divided by 2 gives me a length of 5. So now that I know that each of these little pieces has a length of five, I can now go ahead and take some of this information and put it into a right triangle where I have this diagonal side that I know is 13, this side down here that I know is five, and this is the one I'm trying to find. So I need to go ahead and give these names based on the Pythagorean theorem, because if this is a right angle, this will be A, this will be B, and this will be C. And I set up the Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Plugging in the numbers that I know, I need to make sure I plug these in the right places because I've seen many students get confused and go, oh, it's 5 squared plus 13 squared. It is not. a is the one we don't know, so I'm keeping a squared as a variable. But I do know that b squared is going to be 5 squared, also known as 25 and that equals 13 squared, also known as 169. So I'm looking for some number plus 25 to equal 169. So I can subtract 25 from both sides of this equation. Let me scoot that up so y'all can see, which gives me a squared equals 144. And if I take the square root of both sides, I'll get that just a equals 12. So now that I know that my height of this trapezoid is 12, I have all the information I need to use this area formula. And I know that, let's see, let me get a red marker for this. I know that my bases are 16 and 26, and I know my height is 12. So my first step is to evaluate my parentheses and figure out 16 plus 26. That is 42, so this is 1 half times 42 times 12, and if I plug all that into my calculator, 1, nope, 1 half 
times 42 times 12, I get 252. But I'm not done yet. Because even though I know that my area of this trapezoid is 252, that's not the question I was being asked. So I'm going to go back to my original question. So here's my original question. I know that the trapezoid itself is 252 square feet. And at this point, I'm going to need to bring out a number table or a proportion or however you want to think of it. In fact, I'll write it as a proportion. And I'll say that if one piece has an area of two and a half square feet, then how many pieces do I need to cover 252 square feet? All right, so now I can use the age-old trick for solving proportions, and I can cross-multiply. This would get me 1 times 252, which is 252, equals 2 and a half times my number of pieces that I don't know yet. And if I treat this like a one-step equation, I'll divide by 2 and a half, divide by 2 and a half, and this should get me about 100.8. I think that's exactly right, but let me try it in my calculator just to be sure. Divided by two and a half. Okay, good. I got 100.8, and none of my answer choices are exactly 100.8, but this number is closest to 101, which does match choice A. So A is my answer. It takes 101 pieces, just about 101 pieces, to cover the floor of that isosceles trapezoid.